Hi guys, I hope you're all doing well. Today we're doing a gear review for a microphone and this is for one that I'm going to be using both live and in the studio. This is a vocal microphone, a dynamic microphone and this is the Sontronics Solo. So this microphone only came out a couple of weeks ago. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting the guys from Sontronics, as you may see from the interview with Trevor Coley that's on the channel. And uh, before that, uh, Lisa Coley, the marketing director, had got in touch and said, hey, do you want to try out the solo? And I was like, yeah, sure, why not? So uh, this is a brand new vocal microphone. It's quite chunky, as you can see, it's quite solid. And it's a big beast. Now, um, most of the review today, I'm going to be comparing this to another vocal microphone. I mean, it's they're going to be a point of reference that anyone who sings will, you know, 99.9% .9 chance you will have sung through one of these at one point, and that is the good old Shure SM58. I'm not a big fan of the SM58, and I'm sure I've said it on the channel several times, but it's something that everybody knows, it's something that everybody has used in the past. They're fairly indestructible. They're, uh, you know, they're made very tough. Um, I've actually, part of my intro is me dropping one of these with uh, no worry about consequence. Uh, I feel like I can do the same with the solo. This feels like a very tough beast. Now, something that is interesting is the 58 actually feel, feels quite small in the hand these days, but the Solo is quite a big, chunky thing. It feels like the same kind of size as a modern kind of wireless mic. It's got that big feel to it. It's uh, The body's made out of, I think it's milled aluminium or something like that, or rolled steel. It's, it's made in a single piece. It's all made in England, by the way. Uh, the Solo is made start to finish in the UK, unlike a lot of Sontronic studio mics, which are made in China. This is all made in the UK. So, uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, different things we're going to be talking about today. So, the first one is the sound difference between SM58 and the Solo. Uh, this is a little clip of a band that I play with. This is uh, Josh. And this is just a little bit of iPhone footage, but I got him to try out the SM58 through our uh, PA system and then switch it out for the Solo. So, Watch the difference in reactions. One, two. One, two. Tss, tss. La, 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 la. One, two, two. One, two. One, two. Two, one, two. Oh, wow. One, two. One, two. La, la, la. One, two. So there's someone who's already impressed and he's uh, bugging me to get him one of these. So uh, that's a good start. Now the, the questions are why? Why, apart from being bigger and chunkier, why would this be better than one of these? Now there are several reasons and the first reason I can think of is the 58, the capsule design in this. So basically the design of the microphone is about 50 years old at this point. These were designed all the way back when PA systems were terrible. They had very little high-end reproduction and probably no bass response to speak of. Back in the days when guitarists would have a wall of amps on stage because the PA system was not good enough to handle it. So as much as these are quite tough and rugged, they come from a different era, quite literally. Whereas the Solo was designed very recently to work with modern systems. So. The first thing you would think of then is, well, you can just use EQ on a, an SM58, but EQ leaves you with the potential for feedback. That's one of the things. If you're not using uh, EQ, you're not going to get that ringing and there's a lot less chance of feedback. And uh, the solo just naturally sounds much more modern. We've been using this for things like uh, weddings and giving this to you know, best man for the speech or whatever and they naturally just project out. In my experience, SM58s kind of kind of sound like this, the system, whereas this sounds like a modern, clear, airy voice. 
So the first test we're going to do, we're going to switch over in a second because I'm I'm in the, the live room but all the lights are pointed at me. We're going to switch everything around and I'm going to plug in a PA system. So I'm going to crank it up so we're just near the point of feedback. I'm going to get the gain absolutely identical on these two mics. And we're going to see... Uh, how much sound quality difference we can get. So I'll just record the room sound. So this will just be a test to see how it would sound in a room coming out of a PA system. So more like what you would hear rather than what you would record, which we'll do separately. Okay, so this is the live sound test. And um, I'm about two inches away from the SM58 right now, which is the one that's on. The EQ on the desk is completely flat. The gain is relatively high. Um, this PA system, it's an old Citronic. Um, I wanted to take decent preamps out of the equation, so this is just kind of stock standard budget level preamps, because of course, a lot of the time when you're using a handheld mic like this, it's probably what you're gonna use. Um, as you can hear, it's kind of ringing a little tiny bit. It's not necessarily feedback, but that's kind of part of the uh, the rooms flying this uh, this audio back at me and I'm recording this with a shotgun mic that's right at the back of the room so that it gets a lot of the roominess. So this is the SM58. Now with identical gain settings, I'm going to switch to the solo from the same distance. So this is the Sontronic solo. As you can hear, it's a lot louder. It's got a lot more high end, a lot more clarity coming through without me touching any EQ. Like I said, the entire EQ section is completely flat. I'm going to back the gain off a little bit on both the mics now equally just because I'm pushing it to the point of almost ringing feedback just to prove the point. I mean, we're getting the same uh, resonant frequency on both. Okay, so with a little bit less, I'm getting closer now. So let's test the proximity effect on these. So this is me right up against the grill of an SM58, like my lips are touching it. I'm not shouting, but I'm not exactly whispering either. So this is kind of a medium talking level. So let's switch this to the solo. So this is me right up against the solo. So you can hear that the high end is much clearer, the low end's richer, and uh, there's it just cuts better. So in a live situation, that's exactly the kind of thing that I found. And I mean, they, like I said, the gain is set identically and this is coming across a little bit stronger, a bit louder. And that's one of the most interesting things. Another thing that I can test while we're using this system is the off axis rejection. So I'll switch back to the 58. This is the 58 and that's, oh, that's quite a difference. So if I'm talking now and I move right over to the side, this is the rejection, which isn't too bad. The rejection, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. The rejection on the SM58 isn't the worst, but you can still hear quite a boxy frequency off at the side. I'll do that again. One, two, 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 one, two. It becomes almost radio effect at the sides because, of course, the cardioid pattern isn't completely frequency independent. So I'll switch back. So I'm back on the solo again. So uh, like I say, the gain is identical on the preamps. So let's do the off-axis rejection here. One, two, 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 one, two. Okay, and again, one, two, 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 one, two. So the only things they're getting through at the side here on this super cardioid pickup are very much lower frequencies, which means that you know, that that means that all the higher frequencies like you know symbols and a lot of the cut on a snare drum don't come through the microphone when it's off axis which is really useful okay back to me so now we've done that i'm going to do a section where i clap like a lunatic and it's going to look a bit weird but in context hopefully you'll understand um, the SM58 is a cardioid microphone now what that means is it mostly picks up the sound from the front and reject some of the sound from the back. Uh, that's a great idea for PA systems and using live because it means that a lot of the sound from the other side gets cut out. Unfortunately, cardioid microphones are not necessarily the best suited to a live 
noisy environment because a lot of the sound, especially if, say, you're a singer and you're at the front, the sound doesn't come from behind the microphone unless you've specifically set a stage up so that the microphone's pointing to the back of a monitor. No, what usually happens is that if you're singing on a stage, a lot of the noise might be coming from off to your side from another singer or from the amps to the side or from the drummer who's just over there. So the solo is not a cardioid microphone at all. It's a super cardioid microphone. So what that means is most of the rejection is from the sides, which means that if you put this in front of a drummer, say, so you've got a drummer with kind of a, an overhead mic set up, most of what's to the sides of the mic, including the snare, you know, the uh, cymbals, gets cancelled out. So it's mostly the vocal that remains, which means you get a much clearer vocal performance from someone like a drummer. Or if you've got a guitarist on stage who's blasting the ramp from the side, that's another thing, it all gets cut out. It seems to make the signal much clearer. Now up to this point, we've not actually done a vocal test. So I'm gonna now turn off the PA system and just record if, if, as if it was a studio environment. I'm gonna put the solo right next to the SM58 as with the PA test, but obviously the PA test off and I'm gonna use headphones and I'm gonna record a bit of a, a, a rough vocal for a track. And I'm gonna put a bit of compression and a bit of EQ on the solo and the 58, but I'm gonna use the same compression and EQ to keep things equal because I, it, I would not use a dynamic mic in a studio mix without some form of processing. However, um, let's keep it fair, let's keep it equal so you can hear the difference and then hopefully you can hear why I like the solo. Train whistle blowing Makes a sleepy noise Oh, down need the blankets Go over girls and boys Train whistle blowing Makes a sleepy noise Oh, down need the blankets Go over girls and boys Makes a sleepy noise Makes a sleepy noise underneath the blankets. Rocking, rolling, riding out along the bay. All bound for morning town, many miles away. Rocking, rolling, riding out along the bay. All bound for morning town. Many miles away. Now, um, this mic does have quite an airy modern sound, and let's try something a bit different. Because uh, from chatting to the guys at Sontronics, they reckon that this isn't just a vocal microphone. Because it's quite airy and kind of modern, you can use it in place of other microphones, like, say, a drum kit. Fortunately, I don't have a kit right now, but you can also use it on guitar amps. So it's going to give you a much more bright, bitey tone. So let's get an SM57 and we're going to swap it out with the solo on a heavy and a clean guitar part, reamped, and show you the difference there. It may well be that you find that the solo is a bit too bright, thinking ahead, because I've not actually done the test yet. But usually I find that I go for a high frequency lift on something like an SM57 anyway, so this might actually be quite a nice change. Let's find out. So, on to downsides. 
I can't think of many. There's one that I can think of that's a downside. This microphone is quite big and chunky. It feels good in the hand. It comes with its own microphone clip, which is quite big and chunky. Um, which actually is quite a good thing because they've designed it like you get with those big wireless microphone ones where you can just plop it in rather than having to fiddle about on stage and kind of place the microphone back. And it also, it's quite tough. It won't just fall out. But it does mean that you have to have the clip with it because a standard microphone clip won't fit. So that's a potential downside. And the only other potential downside I can think of is that if you have to get someone else to use one of these who's not heard of it before, they might be like, oh, what's this? I want to use an SM58. And it's like, ah, but that's that's a problem with the industry in general, I think. That's, that's definitely not Sontronic's fault. And before anyone thinks, oh, why don't you like Shaw? I, 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 I do like Shaw and their microphones, apart from the SM58. Um, which is just because it's such an old design at this point that it should have been retired years ago because they've got the Beta 58A. The, the whole Beta series is so much better. It's it's more well-designed. It's got you know a lot more of the, the features that you're looking for. But if you're going to get a Shure Beta series, they're significantly more expensive as well, which is probably why people have heard of the SM58 and it's it's they're about a hundred pounds. I know the price goes up and down, maybe 110, 120 pounds at the moment for an SM58. So people go for that and it really does them a disservice in my opinion. Whereas the Sontronic Solo is out now. It's uh, I think that's a hundred pounds as well. So it's in exactly the same bracket. They've managed to keep the cost down because they've treated this as a live microphone. Um, traditionally, Sontronics make all their mics with lovely studio cases, you know, hard case, which does bump the price up a bit, but for a studio guy, you do want to keep your mics in pristine condition. For live, uh, it comes with a clip, it comes with a leather pouch, which is what I like and use, and it just comes in a cardboard box, which as you can see, mine's already quite road-worn and battered, because I'm lugging this round with me for the purposes of this review, essentially, as soon as this review's finished, I'm probably going to put the uh, the box away somewhere. But that saved them a lot of money and then saved me a lot of money. Oh yeah, full disclosure, I have bought this microphone from Sontronics. Um, as soon as I tried it, I was like, yes. So yeah, this is something I have paid for myself. I'm not being paid for and it's not even uh, like a free review. This is, yeah, I decided to keep it. So... I suppose that's the uh, the long and short of my review, is that it's affordable, it's chunky, sounds modern, doesn't feed back on stage, rejects a lot of spill. What more can I ask for from a dynamic mic? So I hope that's uh, influenced at least a few of you to go out and get one of these yourself because I'm pretty sure that your stage vocal quality and possibly even your uh, studio vocal quality, if you're looking for something in a budget range, will improve with one of these. So, uh, yeah, hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. I'm Adam Steele for the Hot Pole Studios, and I'll see you very soon. Oh, by the way, um, have a look at our Patreon campaign if you haven't already, because the crowdfunding thing really helps us to keep going with this kind of stuff. Uh, check us out on Facebook, Hot Pole Studios, same on Twitter. And we're also on Twitch now, as I mentioned recently, uh, playing a few games every now and again. So, yeah, if you're watching the channel, Keep on with all our social media stuff and you should see other things going on. And there are also good avenues to ask us questions and find out about what's going on in the larger world of the studio. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this, feel free to check out our other videos as you can find here or check out our Facebook and Twitter or our Patreon page, which helps us to make more videos like this. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.